Uh, Corbin, uh, Isaac, y'all come up here, please. Holy Ghost. Don't get mad, musicians. I'm just going to move a couple things around because I'll break your toys and I don't want to. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. Just, just this little area right here. I'll probably be more down there anyway when it's my turn. But uh, I'm on. Uh, what, we, what we do in Mexico is we, we alternate people talking. Uh, y'all are not used to that. <clears throat> y'all want somebody to give me a word. Brother, praise the Lord. <laughs> and, uh, and the word is Jesus is king. That's what the word is. <laughs> and so... Uh, so I bless you. you. If you want to be healed, I can help you with that. But if you want to carry on life as normal like your religious twit world is, I, you know, I'm not going to do that. I don't like it. I disagree with it. It's not working. And yet you keep on peddling the same old canoe. I'm telling you, Jesus is king. If we can figure out how to get to him, uh, and I don't, I'm not going to say I know how, I'm going to say I, I've done it a few times. And uh, he just lets us in, I think, is what happens. So what we got here, we got a little baby fixed to be fed, mom's busy with the, with the milk and that. No, 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 you, this, this, is, this is Fletcher, Jesse, mom, he belongs to her, or him. This is my son, Luis Alberto, stand up, Lou, and say hi. This is Mrs. Hogan, you going to stand up, no? Uh, say hi, Mom. That's Miss Hogan. Isaac's, my, I don't know what he's going to do. This is his family over here. This is happy birthday, right? You're not going to tell me how many. I don't know. I don't care. It don't matter. 28? How's it going? What's up? Uh. <laughs> Knucklehead. There's Blake and his friend, they came back. I tried to run them off, they come back. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Y'all are welcome. Thank y'all, serious. I, I'm, not in the, I'm not into stamping y'all's been there and done that t-shirt for you. But I am interested in helping you heal the cancers that's killing your family. Yeah. And, the blind, and the drugs and the yeah. violence and the... The way things are, the church is, is over in the corner, non-confrontational, trying to get along with everybody. And, and that ain't gonna work. You gotta, you gotta rear up and fight your enemy. His name is the devil. So stand up and let's kick him out. Y'all ready? Go ahead, stand up, stand up. Say, Lord Jesus, we love you. Devil. Out. Out in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. We, love you, we love you, Lord Jesus. We bless this land. We bless this land in Jesus' name. Fivefold ministry. Fivefold blessing. Seven crowns of God in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost fire. Souls in Jesus' name. All right, thank y'all. Have a seat. And, uh, and uh, got my part of mine done, y'all. This is my grandson, Corbin. I don't know what he's going to talk about, but the boy got killed and now he's alive, and I don't always going to say. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're, we're glad to be here, to be here in this part of Georgia. We've traveled a lot of places, and it's good to go to new places. Um, like I said, we're really glad to be here to pray with y'all and bless y'all and to meet new people. It's always um, encouraging to meet new, new people in new churches that are going after God. Um, I was born in Texas, but I grew up in Mexico, so Mexico's home. 
Um, I grew up with my grandpa and my dad in Mexico preaching. Uh, they always had me involved in everything that was going on. Um, and that really saved me. Um, there was, in, through my teen years, I did go through a time where I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want, I didn't read my Bible or nothing. And I think we all go through that. Um, but I still went to church out of fear of my dad and my grandpa. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, um, I'd like to read a verse with y'all that stuck with me through that whole, through all of it. Um, it's in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter three, starting in verse five. says, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all ways know, recognize, and acknowledge him, and he will direct and make straight and plain your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord, and turn entirely away from evil. <clears throat> And so that verse has always stuck with me, just on repeat in my mind. Anytime there's a problem, anytime uh, I'm going through a hard time. Um, when I was at the point where I wanted to leave, when I wanted to just tell my dad and my grandpa, I'm not doing this. Um, because I, I knew I was supposed to be a preacher from the time I was little. God had told me that many times. Um, but just seeing the problems in the church and everything, uh, just letting it affect me, all the problems. Um, but one day, my mom came to me. My mom always has a verse or a word from God for me when I'm down or something. And I told her, Mom, I don't want to hear it. Whatever you have, I don't want to hear it right now. And she said, I don't have anything to say. And she just handed me a piece of paper. She said, read that when you're ready. And I waited a few days. And then I opened it up and started reading it. And it was all the miracles that God had done for me from the time I was a baby. All the times that God had healed me from different diseases, or there, it was a long list. Those two different pieces of paper is how many things it was. <clears throat> and when I started reading that, I started remembering the love of God in those moments. I started remembering the power of God that I felt in those moments, how loved I felt, how much peace I felt. And from that day, I've had a, a, a longing, a desire to go out and help people. To go out and help people find the peace of God and the strength of God to continue on. And so now I'm preaching full-time with my dad and my grandpa around the world. Um, I mainly work in Mexico. <clears throat> and it's, it's still very challenging every day. But it's worth it. And there's been so many times where I know I should put things in the hands of God, but I try to do it on my own. <clears throat> one, one instance that is the biggest, one of the biggest to me, is I owed my dad and my grandpa some money. Um, and it, it really grated on me, because my grandpa always taught me, do your best to stay out of debt. And that's all I could think about was that I owed them. And one day we were doing, I think it was a two-week fast, and I was praying, you know, God, please, I need, I need some money to help pay them back because I didn't have anything to give them. And I felt the Holy Ghost tell me, as long as this is all you're worrying about, I'm not going to help you. 
because you're not putting it in my hands. And it took me a few days of praying to actually let it go, to give it to him. And then I forgot about it. I think it was two weeks later, someone that I'd only met once sent me enough money to pay off my dad and my grandpa. It was it's a big blessing. And so I want to encourage you today to really and truly put the, all your problems in the hands of God because he cares for you. And if you're doing what he wants you to do, he'll provide for you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Amen. Jesus is King. Bless y'all. Thank you for having us and hosting us. It's a blessing to be here. Um, my name is Isaac Armstrong. I grew up in Moody, Alabama, not too far from here. Uh, but I have been working with Brother Hogan uh, since uh, 2003. I think I met him the first time in 99, and I was still in college, my wife as well. But um, uh, we ended up going down in 2003, and we've been, we've been there ever since. But uh, I grew up in church, probably like a, a bunch of you, but I was kind of hacked off at the way uh, the way things were going, people saying one thing and doing something else, and so I was, uh, I was rebellious for a lot of years, but God came back and got me and uh, did a lot of things in my life. I had some awesome encounters where he really just touched me, changed me, transformed me, and in that time, I heard old cassette tape. It was back in the cassette tape days, some crazy fella talking about blinded eyes getting open and deaf ears getting open and all that stuff, and it sounded like the Bible to me. So long story short, I'm, I'm sure you can figure it out, but it was that fella back there. And, um, and, and, and I got to go down to Mexico, and it was, it was hard. Uh, honest, honestly, folks, my, my flesh hated it. So um, I did not think I could do it. But then God came and encountered me again. I need you to know he wants to encounter you. Yeah. It's his encounter that will do the things that you cannot do. It's always that way, and it will always be that way. Amen? Uh, um, I didn't say I, I'm blessed to have Hannah and my boys here with me and, and all them, but it's such, a, it's such a privilege and honor to, to do what we do and get to walk and do life with, with Brother Hogan and, and his family and our whole team that's down in Mexico and all over the world. It's an honor and a privilege to do life with people that believe God can do what he says he can do. Amen? But I believe that it's that encounter... It's got to be the encounter. And um, that's something I've learned from Brother David, not just his preaching, but the way we live our life. Um, and not too long back, um, a buddy of mine, actually Blake, he's sitting over there, so I'll, I'll pick on him a little bit. But uh, he was going through some stuff, and we were talking on the phone. I actually had just come out of Mexico, and I had gotten to the, our office in Texas, and my phone rang, and it was him. And, and he was going through some things, and... He said something to me, and when he said it, the Holy Ghost just, just blew up inside of me. But he was going through, making some decisions, and he said, and, and I, I'm thinking about going over to such and such place. There's a guy over there, you know, he's really prophetic. I'm, I'm thinking about going over there and, and getting a word. And when he said that, something blew up on the inside of me. And I just sat there and listened for a second. But when he started, when he was, he was talking, I don't know what he was saying. I was just going over in my head all of the times, kind of like Corbin was saying. Here's a thing of all the things God's done for you. That was playing in my mind. Of all the times that he came and he spoke to me. And I said something to him. And when I said it, I began to weep because it was, it was the Holy Ghost saying it through me. But I said, I said to him, Blake... All of these years, all of these years, looking back, I can see, all of these years, Jesus has been my prophet. Jesus has been my prophet. When he says it, it's done. You hear me? And he wants to say some things to you. I do believe he wants to speak to Brother Michael. I believe that. I know that he wants to speak to Brother David. But I need you to believe that he wants to speak to you. He's got something to say to you. We're talking about revival. We're talking about all the right things. But it's not a revival in this house. It's a revival in your house. 
Go and shut the door. Get on your face and seek the presence of the living king. And he will come and he will say something to you that nobody can undo. Nobody can undo. When Mary came to the tomb, you know the story. Mary came to the tomb. There was the angels. Where's the body of Jesus? Where have they laid him? Who's talking to her? Think about it. She encountered Jesus, remember? She thought he was the gardener. Jesus is talking to her. But she thought he was the gardener. All of the angst, all of the pressure, all of the the stress had her covered up and she could not see through it. And he's, he's talking to her and she's not getting it. But then he said the most important thing. Did you know the most important word in any language to any human on the planet is their name? It doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter the tribe or the tongue. The most important word to any human being is their own name. He said the most important thing to her that day. He said, Mary. And when he said Mary, something on the inside of her woke up. He's saying your name, bro. Go and get in the secret place. Get on your face. Quit coming to this house and go to his house. Somewhere back along the way, we started coming to church and we quit coming to Jesus. And it all got broke. And it ain't working. Revival can't save you. Jesus can save you. Revival is the gate. Revival is the gate. I believe in revival. You better hear me well. I love revival. But revival was the gate that opened the door that led you to intimacy. Face to face. Past face to face. Do you know what Jesus said? Now it's me and him and him and me. It's past face to face now, guys. It's me and him and him and me. 24-7. 365. And it all starts... Where he told me. He called me into somewhere. It's called the secret place. He said when you pray. Go to the secret place. Go to your closet. Go to that inner sanctuary. That place. That private place. Go to that private place. And he told you to shut the door. He didn't tell you to take your wife. He didn't tell you to take your kids. He didn't tell you to take your pastor. He said you go and you shut the door. And he said, the Father who is in the secret place will hear you. Jesus is smart and he knows that we know that he knows that God is everywhere, right? We get that. God is everywhere. But you better believe he's in the secret place. There's there's a different dynamic inside that place, guys. That's what unlocks us. That's where he whispers. And that's where we become who we're supposed to be. When you come through these doors and you've already been in the secret place all week long, imagine what it's going to look like. Pastor in that church will be a whole lot easier than pastor in the other kind. I love you. I bless you. I bless this land. But we are, we are experiencing a revival in the secret place. Let's do this. Let's do this. It's not just for him to raise the dead. It's for you to raise the dead. It's not just for him to see the blinded eyes open. It's for you to see the blinded eyes open. Do you believe that? I bless you. I love you. In Jesus' mighty name. Brother David, will you come? Let's bless the man of God. Is he good? Thanks. Holy Ghost, y'all good? Shabbat. Holy Ghost. I better reintroduce Miss Hogan. She's piled up with coke. Well, she is again, my goodness. You cold? You cold? Are you? Well, here, put my coat on. You want me to put it on for you? Yeah. This is Miss Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> You all right? I'm good. You want to say something? No, sir. Nothing? Nothing. You sure? I'm sure. All right. Kiss? Absolutely. Thank you. (laughs) 
Are you welcome. Holy Ghost. So this is it. There's not going to be some more stuff. So we're going to need Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. That's where we stopped yesterday. We'll start there. And I want to I wanna say to you, when I first started, my wife and I, I I'm a pastor's son from a Southern Baptist church in, in the Delta in Louisiana. Mississippi Delta. My first job with God, my daddy had a church in his location that he needed help with. He had six people. First Sunday I preached, I lost five. Because <laughs> Because you see, you have a hard time with the old guy who has experience and I know how to manipulate you. You should have met that guy just came out of the cypress stump. He's a little bit raw. There's one thing I figured out the last 42 years. And I'm going to explain it to you. Jesus is king. (laughs) And I'm not going any other directions. Okay? Because I know you want something awesome, something cute, some obscure verse in some language that nobody speaks anymore that has some hidden meaning that's awesome. That you can get in your little coffee shop, your little Starbucks with your little donut and your four little friends. And you, when you get over caffeinated, you can start talking. Well, I'm not over caffeinated. I don't drink coffee. But I'm going to talk anyway. Look what that says. She's going to bear you a son. And what you going to call him? Assembly of God, Catholic, Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim. Y'all getting weak on me. Y'all scared because I'm saying the names. Well, I'm not scared. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. It's not Mary. Them little old beads you hustle around and rub on and call on Mary are going to put you in hell. Is that clear? You clear? In case I need to reiterate, I can make it street clear. Shabba. You look up there. Does that say Mary? What does that say? Oh, I'm just wondering if you can read your own language. I'm not mad. Well, let me, let me, hold on, hold on. I am mad tonight. (sighs) Hopefully it's not you. (laughs) She will bear a son. Say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I have sonship. sonship. I'm part of a son. son. His name is Jesus. Jesus. You ladies say it. I am a daughter of Zion. Say it. Men say it, I am a son of God. Say it. I am a son of God. In Jesus' name. name. Say it. He's my savior. Say it. You say these words and you let hell know it. Jesus is my savior. Say it. I don't need an idol. Say it. I don't need need beads. beads. And I don't need somebody intervening for me. I I have that. It's the Son of God. I'm wondering if I'm making myself clear. And look who he is. What's he going to do for us? Look what that last phrase says. What's he going to do? Say it. Say it. Jesus, save me. I need help. I'm a human. 
I'm on my way to make a mistake. Say it. But you're going to save me. Now, I've asked for permission, but I don't know exactly if I want to do it or not. It's pretty aggressive. But there, you say that, you say that now. The, the ones of you that are in here to gather up uh, criticism and critiquing and all that for the internet, for, for the unbelieving crowd, I want to tell y'all thank you for the free advertisement. So I'm going to give you something to talk about. There's two things I want to say that's negative, uh, comes from the negative side of things, and then there's two things from the positive. So we'll just keep it all balanced up. How's that sound? <laughs> but you see how aggressive I am. You, you see I'll look you right in the face, and I believe you're friendlies, most of you. I believe that. <laughs> I really do. I believe that. There's a movement to take away from the power of the name of Jesus. There's a movement that take, that's trying to take away from the covenant of the blood of the Lamb of God. And I'm not going to be part of that. I'm going to go on record. Do y'all know uh, Bill Johnson? He's famous. I'll use a famous guy. I was over at his place a few weeks ago. Well, that's months now, a few months ago now. And, uh, you know, I'm there, and it's packed out. There's thousands of people in the main hall where we was at. And then he had five more venues around his city with, with live feed going into them. And it was a big deal. There was lots of people there. And, uh, and for, for them... To let me come there is amazing. Because, because they're, they're great. There's nothing wrong with them, in my opinion, other than being human, which makes them a failure. <laughs> and I like them. All the musicians over there, I know everyone I'm doing as kids. I know all of them now, real famous ones. I was just with them over there. My son's got the shirt on, Red Rocks. I was over there with them at doing that thing. Real famous deal. And they let me preach. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big deal. There's 12,000 Americans there. And wow, that was pretty nice. So anyway, I, I, was, I walked up on Bill Johnson before he was famous. We as friends. That matters. You hear me? I believe it's more political and mental, but but he he has always he and I have always been favorable to each other because we're after a similar event. Jesus. How we actually met? He invited me. I went out there. Way back yet, before they got famous. And I went into his thing there and we was talking. He said, David, he said, now I know you raise the dead and I know you crazy as a Bessie bug. <laughs> he said, but you got to listen to me. There's something going on here. And I'm looking at him. I live where witch doctors can turn into anything and fly and do, do things that you don't even believe exist anymore. They can walk on water and, and breathe fire, turn into fireballs and bugs. and It's amazing what they can do. They're pretty popular. I like them, actually. <laughs> I do. I like them. They're awesome. They're good guys. All you got to do is get them saved. They're the best preachers. <laughs> it's true. They're spiritual. They get it. They understand. It's, once you get a, one of them warlocks saved, you've got you a good preacher. And uh, Brother Bill says to me, in the very beginning, way back there, he goes, 
Now, David, there's some odd things happening. He said, you, you know, you're going to be up there talking and you're welcome to say and do anything you want to. And I said, and I'm looking at him. Okay. Look, they got up there, famous bands playing, and they shut up, and, and then it's my turn. I laid my Bible down on the thing, and as soon as I chunked it up on the thing, it was like somebody dumped right over me. These big old white feathers started falling. And, and I'm looking at them. <laughs> and I'm thinking, there must be a chicken up there. <laughs> I ain't never seen a, I mean, what, I mean, feathers? What the? So I reached and got me one of them big old, it was big, white one. And I'm looking at it, it looked brand new. It didn't even look used. <laughs> And I'm looking at it, and Brother Bill just folded his arms, put his head down, and his face got red. Because he don't have a clue what I'm going to do, and neither do I. <laughs> but see, I didn't know whether to believe it or not believe it. And I asked him, you got somebody up in that attic dropping these things down? He said, no, I don't. I said, you didn't set me up just to get a reaction. He said, I did not. He said, although, that would be a good thing. <laughs> and the whole time I was talking, them things were falling out of the sky. Then, then, I'm sorry to all y'all unbelievers, but this is why I'm here to run unbelievers off. <laughs> you, you think I'm here to coax you and coddle you. Listen to me, the power of God don't need a stink bug around it. Your unbelief, take it and leave. The door's right there. Well, I can prove what I do, you can't. You ain't nothing but an unbelieving devil and you need to get on out. Now, if you need me to help you go to hell, I'll get the door for you. You gotta understand, y'all Christianity ain't the same as mine. I don't see where loving somebody's letting them run over me and stick me with a knife. So all of a sudden these chips, I started seeing these shiny flake things falling. And I'm going, is any of the rest of y'all seeing something shiny in the air? Here he goes again. My Bible got covered with these pretty big flakes of gold and feathers and I, I, I mean it was odd to me now I mean and to y'all dead raising and people getting eye sockets growing eyeballs and growing legs to y'all that's weird but to me it's normal and, and, and but I can't see no use for these stupid feathers and it's stupid little flakes of gold. I mean, what, what sense is there in that? And then one of y'all's colonels fought in Korea for y'all. So y'all wouldn't have to go or they wouldn't have to get here. They can't make it here to hurt you ladies and that. He's over there. And this artillery, they shot artillery up into his, his headquarters. This colonel blew him up. American government put him back together because he was a very costly fellow. He was a colonel. But when they put him back together, you see, your technology and this science you believe in is limited. Well, let me tell you about your God. His name is Jesus. He will save his people. That's a man-made explosive device went off, blew him in two nearly, and the government put lots of money in that fellow to keep his knowledge and put him back together. But when, he come, when they got, got him put back together, his right leg was about two and a half inches shorter than the other one, and he walked like this. He's a full bird colonel. And he walked up at me. 
He said, I've been at this church a long time. I ain't seen this many manifestations. I said, I ain't been here but one day, and this is the most I've ever seen. <laughs> he, says, he says, I'm a colonel. I said, I'm not. I'm just a guy that raises the dead. You got all the smarts, and all I get out of it is the ability to raise the dead. He said, Brother David, I got blown up in Korea. And they did their best. And they, at least my life is back. He said, but I need something from you. And it's beyond feathers and chips of gold. Come on. Amen. Amen. He said, you didn't fuss at us about our gold and about our feathers. And I said to him, I wanted to, boy, it was all over me to fuss at y'all. <laughs> but I couldn't tell if it was God doing it or y'all, so I held my peace till I could figure it out. <laughs> he said, I need you to touch me because I need a new bone. I need a new hip and a new leg joint up here. I said, what else you need, Colonel? He said, that'll do good, Dave. Y'all, I'm not kidding you. I saw this with my eyes. I laid my hands upon this fella's head. He blew like, I mean, this is a full, full, full bird colonel now. This ain't no, this ain't qualified fulano. This is a full, this is an educated war fella. And when he blew like the wind, a leaf in a windstorm, I said to myself, Seth, there's something here that you ain't seeing. Keep your mouth shut and observe. And that guy hit the deck, and then about 40, 50 people with him, they went down. <clears throat> they was gone. They was gone for the count. And the next day I was back out there, same thing happened. Here comes that stuff and sparklies and all them feathers and all that stuff, and I'm just, oh, it's annoying. I, And Brother Bill says to me, you don't know, do you? I said, what? That there's some more feathers on the ground? Yeah, I'm looking right at them. <laughs> he said, no, David. He said, I got you. Somebody's going to help you in the prayer line this evening. I said, okay. I look over there. It's the colonel. I said, how you doing, Colonel? And if you'd have seen that man run over at me, I, I was backing away from him because when I saw him, he, he was walking like this. But then the second time I saw him, full sprint, buddy. And he, he's, a, he's, you know, he's scary looking. I said, I said, well, was you tricking me yesterday? He said, nope. He said, I've been the whole day in the hospital and they trying to figure out where I got that new hip from. <laughs> Yoga created it for him. So I told Brother Bill, all right, package me up some of them feathers and that gold. I'm going to take that to the house and put it in my pile of goodies that I got that God's done. And the other day, though, that was the first time. Now, the other day, I was over there, you see? And we got a history now, long, everywhere. We go to around the world, all over the place. We see each other, and we work together in these conferences and do these things. And... Uh, I roll up on him with all these thousands of people and I'm looking at him because now they're famous, you know. People change when they get famous, don't they? I heard me some stuff about them people I didn't like. So I have to, you have to talk to the horse's mouth. You don't want to deal with the other end. You don't talk to the mouth. 
So I was sitting there talking to him and I said, Brother Bill, glad to see you. He said, I'm glad to see you too, David. He said, I noticed you got a question. I said, he said, I saw it when you walked in the door. I said, yeah, I do. Yeah, I've heard some negative things about y'all last couple of years. I was just wondering what kind of inhibitors, what kind of chains you gonna put on me? I need to know where I can tell you whether I'm gonna do it or not. Because more than likely I won't. And he, I don't know if you know him, but this man is sharp. This is a wise human being. Really good teacher. He folded his arms and went back on his back hip like this. He said, David Hogan, yes, sir. In this house, if I'm breathing, you're a free man. No chains. I said, I'll help myself then. Because you see, what you don't know is his wife and I are real good friends. I mean, every time we're together in a service, it don't matter where, both of us get painted gold. Both of us. It doesn't matter where. It's the weirdest thing. She's a good person, that lady. She makes a real good friend. I like her. Now, let me tell you why I told you that. Because a few months ago, I was home in Mexico, and we had a service, and there was lots of hundreds of people there, maybe even a thousand or so, and something happened called the fire of God fell on us. You see how I worship God up here? You should see how I do it at my house. I don't, I turn and look at the folks, we stack up four bands. There's got to be four bands instead of one. Because when the Holy Ghost falls, the first people to go is the band. Doom. Not always, but, but a lot of the time. And there you got to have another band waiting so that as soon as these guys get chopped out by the Holy Ghost, you can stick somebody else up there and keep them going. This is what I do. You can ask the, anybody in my group here. I stand in front for hours. All I do is lift up the name of Jesus and pull down the fire. And in this service, I guess we was in about two or three hours, just straight worship. No, no time limit, no frame, no, nothing, no other agenda, nothing else to do but worship Jesus. You should try it sometime. And for, for I don't know what the reason was. I don't, there was nothing apparent. But, but f young families started coming up and repenting. Husband, wives, kids. Uh, uh, just, and I mean, I'm talking about getting plowed. The whole family, it was lots of them, like eight or nine families or ten maybe. It was a bunch of them, young people's. And I'm standing there, I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring it. Because there's always more. There's more of the presence. His name will be called Jesus. And he it is who will save his people from their sins. So we need him here. So we need to call him in. We need to ask him to come. And we need to wait till he comes. We need to not be in a hurry. And so the next thing that happened was this, this little little chubby little person walked up on me. Little old girl, she's a pretty girl, she's chubby. She rolled up on me. And she, she's quite aggressive. And, and I'm, I'm good with that, y'all. I mean that. I, you saw me a while ago. You're going to roll up on me. I'm going to look at you. God's who you are. And so she looked, she looked at me. She says, I need something from you. And I just laughed at her. Yeah, I think I'll be a sposa. Gracias. 
<laughs> I, got my, I got my wife, thanks. And she says, she says, she says, no, hermano David, no, brother David, no. No, te necesito ayuda, necesito ayuda, David, por favor. I said, sí, hermanito, entiendo, pero este, estamos a hablar, güey. And she said, you know, she said, I need you, Brother David. You know, I'm looking at her, dude. I got my needs. Mine's right over there. I'm good. And she goes, she goes, hermano David, hay demonios. Yeah, I said, es lo que veo, güey. I can see that. And then this tall, skinny kid rolls up. And it's one of my, I recognize him to be one of my pastor's sons. But I can't remember where because he's older and I can't place him. And he comes up and he says, Brother David, help me. I says, all right. What do you want, son? And he grabbed that girl's hand. I said, ah, it's su esposa. It's your wife. He said, yes, it is. I said, dude, I can't. Necesitan caminar juntos, güey. <laughs> Y'all need to walk together when you come up on me like that. <laughs> Y'all, here's how it went, seriously. He said, I've made a bad mistake. Hermano David, hay problemas. There's problems, brother. I said, I can see, I can see these problems. Y'all ain't coordinated. I can see it. I said, but que clase de problemas? What type of problems are they? And the girl says, I'm a high priest of the Santa Muerte. Now, y'all don't understand what Santa Muerte is. There's a couple of hands in here that I see understand what the Santa Muerte is. The Santa Muerte means holy death. And where I live, the cartels worship that. There's a new demon in y'all's region, and you don't even know it. So I'm going to verse you in how powerful your God is. Because I'm going to tell you this right now. You can bring your spirit and let's just do this. Because I'm not bluffing. You hear me? Jesus is rey. 